It's the nation's favourite antiques experts. Yes, a good wait. <laughs> and it smells. Oops, steady. Behind the wheel of a classic car. Good morning, my lady. Good morning, Parker. And a goal to scar Britain for antiques. Whoopsie. Come on. The aim to make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no mean feat. <laughs> They'll be worthy winners. <laughs> And valiant losers. <laughs> Will it be the high road to glory? It's about winning. Or the low road to disaster? Pop, pop. This is the Antiques Road Trip. Beep, beep. It's a glorious day to wander through Wales in the company of antiques experts Rue Irvin and Angus Ashworth. Does it seem like the sun always shines? Sun shines on the right, just as they say. Ooh. That'll be a hedge, then. <laughs> Mind the roller, Roo. That silver shadow might be your runaround for this trip, but they don't come cheap, you know. The iconic mascot. You know what she's called, don't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, what's that? The iconic mascot. <laughs> Spirits of ecstasy. Yeah. Well, that's what I feel every time I'm in the car with you, Angus. She wasn't feeling very ecstatic at the last auction, was she, when her sizeable lead took a bit of a nosedive? Oh, uh, no! At 15. At 15, oh. is there any... Angus, meanwhile, was playing with a very tight budget. £12 for a silver ore. Can't argue with that. But he squeezed out every last drop of profit and has leapt ahead of his rival. I was very confident about my items, but, I mean, they exceeded all expectations. I don't think either of us were expecting that result. Yeah, but I'm a little bit worried. You know, have I peaked too soon? It's a common problem. Rue, who started out with £200, has seen her finances shrink down to £144.86. Some room for improvement there, I'd say. But Angus, who started with the same amount, is now well in the lead with £270 and 48p. So well done. I think the money should burn a hole in your pocket. Yeah. It should burn, baby, burn until there's not a penny left. <laughs> My advice. <laughs> I suggest you follow it. Do you know, you're this lovely, sweet lady. But there's a dark side to you, isn't there? You know, it just comes out every so often. Yes. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Our two started this trip in Northern Ireland. They're currently doing Wales, and they'll journey down to England's south coast before heading back to a final auction in Clevedon. On this leg, they'll head over the border for an auction in Wootton under Edge. But first, we kick off proceedings together in Ammonford. Well, I'm looking forward to this one. I've got absolutely stacks of money. You, not so much. No, you are officially Mr Moneybags and I'm Mrs Empty Pockets, <laughs> nearly. Well, I'd best let you go in first and find the bargains. What a gent, eh? This former church hall is now home to Ammonford Antique Centre. Most of the antiques action takes place in this one main room, so let's try to stay in our own lanes, eh, chaps? Ah, I always like to find something local to the area that we're in. And these, these are very interesting. We've got here free miners' tokens. So each miner would have had their own little disc with their number on. As they go down to the mines, they'd hang that on the board so they know who's down there when they came out, they'd take it back. Very collectible. Quite a niche market, though. Ticket price, £65. You really need to know which the rare tokens are and not. Not my area of expertise, so I'm going to leave those, but nice to see a bit of local history in the heart of coal mining country. Expertise. <laughs> Medals of more your forte, eh? Women's own cookery medal. I mean, that's fantastic. Not your usual gong in the services. Press metal, it's only semi-precious. Got a laurel on the back that would have been engraved somebody's name. But lovely panel in here of two ladies carrying a steaming bowl of food out from the kitchen. So it's a nice decorative piece. Presented by the popular woman's magazine. They also gave one out for handicrafts. Age-wise, it's probably... 1950s, 60s, that sort of era. Not a huge amount of age. It's been made, obviously, for some sort of competition, maybe a local agricultural show or something like that. Five pounds, I'm having that. So, decisive. Uh, now, how's our less well-off shopper doing? Now, you don't come across that often. Bing Crosby signed letter. Look at that. Stamped from Los Angeles, April the 10th, 1946. Sent to Mr. Lionel Williams in Garnet, Carmarthenshire. That's lovely. Bing Crosby of Hollywood. See, this is so collectible. Didn't he sing, Brother, can you spare a dime? Something you can relate to, Rue. <laughs> Dear Mr. Williams, due to material shortages, I'm not going to be able to send out any more photos 
until we can obtain photo stock, envelopes and cardboards. Our next picture release is Road to Utopia. Oh no, so that's quite sad. The person wanted a signed photo from Mr Bing Crosby and he's got none left. Price at £60. It's nice. Is it going to make money auction? No. But I am touching Bing Crosby's handwriting. It's made my day. It's almost the equivalent of a white Christmas. <laughs> so, Bing's not a thing. Anything else in that cabinet? These round Germanic, very 1940s style glasses. If I have a look here. I think it's 10 karat gold plated Harrods spectacles, 25 pound, but they're in their original case. Now you actually want some kind of mark that this is 10 karat gold plated and that's where you've got it. One twentieth dash ten. They're high spec specs then. You can see where some of the gold plate has come off, but that's a sign that these have been really well worn by the person who owned it. This could actually be my first buy. Worth a look then. Now, see how your oppo's getting on. <laughs> I spotted you. <laughs> I was trying to hide. <laughs> what right? are you doing? This is my turf. No, I'm on this side, you're on that side. Yeah, this is no man's land in the middle. Oh, really? Well, yeah. you know, all the quality is on this side. Well, I've already found a few things. What about you? You need to find a few bargains. I've got my eye on a couple of things already. Have you? Mm -hmm. Have and they're you? not breaking the bank. Right, enough of the mind games. Back to the hunt. I'm just going to climb on the shop stock and lift this top hat down. And box. Very important. We have the cardboard box with it. We'll have to do the mandatory trial. First Bing Crosby, now Fred Astaire. A little bit small. That's the trouble with these vintage top hats. They had smaller heads back then. I warrant to His Majesty the King. Looking at the crown, that's probably George V, possibly Edward VII in date. And they've become really popular, actually, at auction recently for a number of reasons. Probably the races. People like to wear them to uh, all the races. But condition is key. So you've got this silk work here, and what you don't want is any moth holes or anything in there. So the top's the most important bit, and the rim. This is in good order. We turn it underneath. It is starting to get a bit threadbare on the boards there. We've got the case with it, which is nice. All the maker's details there. What's really good? Henry Heath. I'm going to let you into a little secret, because many people don't know this. My first name is not Angus, it's Henry. Ah, it's a sign. No price on it, though. But I've spotted this on here as well. Little tan leather travelling case, lovely. And what we've got here is, you see this little cup. Turn this out, <laughs> telescopic cup, that locks into place. And you've got a lovely silver-plated, with gilt, interior travelling cup. Lovely. What have we got on that? £22, not a lot of money. Tempted with that, also very tempted with the top hat. Put the right type of headdress back on. Let's go see what we can do. You'll need to talk to Deborah then. Hello. How are you there? How are you doing? You're okay, right. Okay, not too bad. Good. I found a few bits. Right. Top hat which hasn't got a price on. Okay, yeah. Um, this little travelling cup. Yeah. 22 on it. And a little okay, metal there. Yeah. Five pounds. What could we do on prices on, on right. the top hat? What, how much is that for the, a start? The top hat is £40. Pounds. It's £40? Pounds. Yeah, with the original box. And if we did a deal for the whole lot? 55 for the three. You know what? I was only going to buy two. I'm going to buy okay. three off you. Okay. That'd be wonderful. Thanks. Thank Thanks you very lot. much. Thank you. That works out. Uh, £30 pounds for the topper, 20 for the cup, and a fiver for the medal. And with him out of the way, our Rue gets the whole place to herself. She'll like that. Ah, spotted something. Don't you love it when they lock cabinets so I can't get in? Never get between Rue and her trinkets, eh? Ah, there's the knack to it. I do like a brooch, but what attracts me is this huge piece of mother apparel. It says it's a cameo, sterling silver brooch, but I think of cameos as more the portrait, that lovely silhouette that you get of the Victorian lady. Um, having said that, the lovely iridescent colours are gorgeous. So it says sterling silver there, which is fine, it's, it's marked, but it's not British Hallmark. And it's got a huge chunk of beautiful iridescent mother apparel. Look at the colours, it's almost like a mermaid's tail. Absolutely glows. It's got £25 on it. That could be quite a nice safe buy. I can't take too many risks because I don't have a huge amount of money to play with. But I think I found my cabinet here. It sparkles and the prices are good. 
dive back in then. These are the sweetest little silver napkin rings I've ever seen. Birmingham, 1928, so you're right in the middle of the Art Deco era. In terms of design, they're quite nice. They've got some engraving on it, but you've got the British hallmarks there that you're looking for and the date letter. And at £15, you can't argue with that. I wouldn't dream of it. Shall we consult with Deborah? Hi, Deborah. Hi there. I found three items that I quite like, actually. Right, OK. So I've got this silver Mother of Pearl brooch, which is priced up at 25 Right. What's the what the absolute best you can do on that? Twenty on the brooch. And these glasses you've got at twenty-five. Yeah. What could you do on those? Twenty again. Twenty, 20 okay. Yeah. So that would make it twenty, twenty, forty, and the fifteen fifty-five. Yeah. Would you be able to squeeze it down to forty-five? Oh dear, yeah. you're a hard bargainer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. you're a star, Deborah. Okay. Thank you. So that works out. Fifteen pounds for each of her three purchases. Lovely to meet you, Deborah. Take care. Bye-bye. A very productive morning all round. Feeling hungry after all that shopping, Angus has made his way to the coast at Clanethley. He's down on the sands of Burry Inlet to find out about the local culinary speciality that's been harvested here for centuries. Hello. Angus. How are you hey, doing? I'm Rob. I've heard you're uh, the man to talk to about cockles. Well, I know a little bit. Robert Griffiths has been gathering cockles here for 20 years, so I'd say he is quite an expert. What actually is a cockle? It's a mollusk that lives in the sand, okay. just underneath. Yeah. As big as the shell is, that's how deep the cockle is. What do we look for in a cockle? Is there a certain size or age or what? what? Well, ideally, we like year old and yep. over. You can tell the age of a cockle by looking at the shell. OK. When you look at the shell, it has growth rings. Oh, I see, if, yeah, if it's got real bands ring, on the shell. It's quite a difference from all of these little tiny baby cockles, then. Yeah, he's last year's, so he'll be that size in six months. Wow, that's quite a growth rate. Oh, they grow well. Cockles are found all over the British Isles, but the calm waters of this estuary are the ideal conditions for them to grow in abundance. So you gather them just like this by hand, raking through the sand? Yes, yeah, the same method now has been done since... Oof. Roman times, all by hand. So, wow, OK. So you've got your rake, your riddle, your bucket and your bag, and that's it. And that's it. And, and that. a lot of hard graft. And a lot of hard graft, yeah. <laughs> I can hear this noise, crackling, like a crackling pop noise. Is it, what's that? That's the cockle singing to you. <laughs> <laughs> I know it sounds daft, yeah. but cockles make a noise when, they, when they're out of the water, and you can hear it. It's, it's, like, yeah. it's like a hissing sound. Yeah. And that's when we can tell we're by cockles, because they, they sing to you. Yeah. Well, now you've found them, Angus, I think you should earn your keep. Start here, end here. Oh, right? OK, OK. So, each section at a time. Yep. Pull them in. Yep. Start again. Wonderful. Right, so I'll start left to right. Too deep. Too deep. You'll never pick them up like that. OK. <laughs> Too much sand. The whole idea is to float them out. There's an art to this, isn't there? There's a knack to it. Yeah. Yeah, better show them how it's done, Robert. If you bring the rake through, yeah. lightly. Yeah. You start to see them. them out. And you put them in the riddle then. Yeah, ah, I see. And then... And then a sieve it out. You take your water with you and you wash yep. your cockles. I'm presuming that that lets all the little young all the, ones out. All, all the small tiny. ones, yep. all, all the baby spat gets fall, fall through. Falls through and that lives to grow. And, and that lives to grow. And that's what you're left with. And you do that till you've got 14 of those, and that's your daily quota. Well, I've only filled about a fifth of that. Yeah, well, you'll be here a long time. The will be back by the time we finish. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've got enough for a light snack, Angus. Nowadays, it's mostly men who do this back-breaking work, but traditionally, this was a job for women. The men went to work in the steelworks and the pits, and yep. the women came to the sands to subsidise incomes. Used to pick Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Yep. Then they used to boil the cockles and take them all around South Wales, up the valleys, yep. for the basket trade, selling them in markets, local markets, pubs, okay. whatever they could sell them, really. And is it still as popular today? Yes, it's uh, very popular. You go look at Swansea Market, places full of cockles. Yeah. And it's what Swansea Market was built around, was the cockles. So it's always been popular in Wales, always. Lovely. Now, at the end of a hard day's work, it must be time for a Welsh breakfast. Bacon, lava bread, which is a local delicacy made out of seaweed, and, of course, some freshly picked cockles. What do you think of it? It's all right, isn't it? 
bit different, but very traditional, isn't it? Yes, it's, it's a very traditional meal. Uh, my father and I used to go every Saturday morning to the market and buy the cockles and our bread for the breakfast with baker. Anyone is allowed to pick a few cockles for their own consumption, but commercial gathering is heavily regulated to stop the stocks of these tasty morsels from depleting. What's the future hold then for the cockles? It all depends how long the cockles stay here, but the market for cockles is huge. It's getting bigger every year. Now it's sold to all the posh restaurants in London. A lot of the cockles go to Holland, Spain, France. So it's for everybody now. Yeah. It's not just for the working man, it's for everybody now. It's um, an acquired taste, the lava bread, isn't it? It is. Yeah, but the cockles are good. Yeah. Cockles are very nice. I must have picked some good ones. <laughs> <laughs> So, while Angus has been digging around at sea level, Rue's headed for the hills. This is some gorgeous scenery. It's really beautiful. I fall in love with the people, even the antiques, but not the narrowness of the roads. No, 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 Wales can keep that. <laughs> She's taking the scenic route down to Swansea, Wales's second city. The name comes not from swans, but from Swain Forkbeard the first Danish king of England who allegedly founded the city. Rue's here hoping to conquer her next shop, Room for Antiques, which is something you should always make. She has a smidge under £100 to play with, and as they say, if you want to get ahead, get her! Fits my petite little bonds quite nicely, I think. I love a good Victorian top hat, but you know, they're just not in vogue anymore. You just don't make the money. Blimey, keep that to yourself when you next see Angus. That's very sweet. Nothing exciting, but that's a Victorian papier mache snuff box or a pill box. It's, it's got a bit of mother of pearl, but not jumping out at me. But I still find it amazing that the Victorians made so much furniture, tables, trays from paper. Quite clever they were. That's not exciting me. I bought a few things which are nice and small and delicate and pretty. I want something that's got some oomph now. OK. How about that for oomph? That vibrant red just jumps out at me. That looks like West German pottery. And thankfully, they're always really well marked. There you go, West Germany. It's even got the specific product number as well. Now, these were actually called fat lava. It's that thick, oozy, luscious glaze. It actually makes it look just like lava. And West German pottery, it's known for its reds and its oranges and melting colours. Do you know, that's why it's called lava. There were over 100 potteries producing this style of ceramics, all made after 1949, when Germany was divided into East and West. £40, that's not a bad price, considering the weight of what you're getting there. I think I need to see what I can do with the price to make it tasty enough for me. Let's go find out. Yes, let's. Paul's your man to speak to. Paul, I found a nice piece of West German pottery. And I never usually buy pottery or ceramics, but I have to say I like the glaze on that. The colour's lovely, isn't it? It is. Now, you've got that price up at 40. Yeah, I do. What could you do on this? What cracking deal can you give me? Uh, I can't take an awful lot off it. I'm going to say probably 38. Ah! Right. <clears throat> Sorry, involuntary noises there. She'd be no good at poker. How about I just round it up to 35? OK, I'll tell you what, I'll go for 35. That's fantastic. It's a good deal. Thank Lovely. you very much, Paul. Her biggest purchase so far, but she's managing to eke out those pennies quite nicely. Off I go. Let's hope we don't trip on the way out. <laughs> don't even joke about that in those heels. <laughs> now, let's reconvene with your chum for a spot of sightseeing. This is the best way to see a beautiful country. In a lovely car and with a... Charming companion. No, it's going to say uh, oh. charming steering wheel. <laughs> Charming. <laughs> night, night. It's our tripper's last day in the land of song, and they've really got a taste for the place. I've sampled a few things. I've had the traditional Welsh breakfast, but I don't think I'd rush to have it again. No matter where I go, I always like to eat the local dishes, drink the local drinks. What is the local Welsh drink? Maybe it's a lava bread smoothie lava in the morning smoothie. to get oh, you going? No, I'm not <laughs> having that. Sounds delicious. Yesterday, our Rue tucked into the shopping, bagging a big bit of West German pottery, a mother-of-pearl brooch, two silver napkin rings and a pair of posh specs. 
a 10 karat gold plated. And worn, she has a little under 65 pounds for her shopping today. Angus, on the other hand, still has well over 200 pounds to play with after picking up a traveling cup, a top hat. We'll have to do the monetary trial. And one other little thing. I think you deserve this. Is it food? <laughs> it's not food, but it is food related. I got your medal because you deserve a medal. But it's a cookery medal! Woman's own cookery That's lovely! Yeah, I wish it didn't have to go to auction, because then you could wear it with pride. I think, actually, this is not even going to the auction. I'm having it. <laughs> I'm having it. <laughs> Glad so, box closed, in yeah. my pocket. Naughty. All their goodies will eventually go to auction in Witton under Edge. But before that, we're alighting in the town of Bridge End. Time to part company, I'm afraid, Rue. Oh, I'll fun. see you later. Cool. Uh, uh, what? I need the medal back. What medal? The medal that Pistol. I gave you. Come on. Thank you. Thank You've got to watch that one, you know, Angus. Bridge End Antiques is his first shop of the day. Let's go to work. Now then, how are you doing? Angus, oh, nice hello. to meet you. Pleased to meet you, mate. Have a look around, we've got a bit of everything. Great, uh, brilliant. Please, um... I'll give you a shout in a sec. Densely packed is how I'd describe Julian's shop. It won't take long to look round it, but to make a decision, that's another matter. Oh, this is going to be tough. There's some good bits in here, some good bits. There are. That's one of them. Nice little leather case. What's it got inside it? <gasps> nice little vanity case, that's nice. Oh, it's got a strop for sharpening your Cutthroat razor, not that I need one. Got the clothes brush. Could do with this, actually, for the road trip. Keep me looking smart and prim. All your containers there, lotions and potions. That is a nice tan leather travelling case. And, you know, you think, now, look at all that extravagance, but it's no different to taking a bag away now. But it was done in style. That goes very well with somebody with a tan leather cased travelling cup. Mmm, get ticket price, £34. That's not bad, is it? That is a very strong possibility. Let's stick it on the list, then. What else? That's nice. Not normally my sort of thing. I don't do sort of ceramics, but this is a lovely bit of what I call slipware. This lovely glaze on it there. This is actually a marriage pot. So, George and Edith Dean married May the 6th, 1939. What a lovely wedding present. Impressed potter's marks there, clay pits. Iweni? Iweni? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to... Local knowledge here, yeah. That's our, that's our local pottery. It's only about a mile okay. down, down the road. Uh, they're still going today. They have been going since perhaps the 15th, 16th century. There's been six different potteries down there. What sort of money's on this? Because it hasn't got a price tag. Uh, the recommended retail I've got on that in my shop here is £120. The issue is I'm going to Wotton Under Edge. Well, that's our auction. local history from our local area. Oh, let's be honest, uh, you've got to take coals to Newcastle in this game, so you might struggle there. You haven't got anything that would be ideal in Wotton Under Edge, would you? I have got, well, it's a local bit of history. It's from Stourbridge, which is about 30 miles down the road from Wotton Under Edge. I think it's a bit further than that, Julian. It's all the local history from the 16 and 1700s. All the local dignitaries have got all the prices, all the local farms, all the indentures. It's all handwritten. It's a piece of history. Priced up at £125. They're certainly unique. What would be the best one? Because it is quite a chancy lot. And it's one of those that could well, just that make £20, pounds, or the, it could... The, it could make £20, pounds, it could make £500. Pounds. These, yeah. the, but this is history. You will never see this again. I'll do this for 80 quid. 80 quid, OK. Well, there is one other thing that I definitely would like. A lovely vanity case. Sure. £34 pounds on it. What, what could that be? 100 quid the lot. £100 pound the lot. <laughs> well, fortune favours the brave. I'll take the pair of them. OK. Thank you. You enjoy reading that tonight. Yeah. So, £20 for the case and £80 for those ledgers. Here's hoping there are some star Bridgians willing to make the 70 mile trip to the auction. Rue, meanwhile, has travelled to Wales's south coast and the village of St Donats. Its imposing 12th century castle is now the home of a very forward looking school. She's here to find out how its students created a boat that has rescued thousands of lives at sea from Peter Howe, the principal at the United World College of the Atlantic. So what is the UWC? So UWC is a group of schools and colleges around the world. And the idea is to bring students of high promise and potential together to live and learn. 1962 is the foundation year of the movement, and it began here at Atlantic College. 
1962 was the height of the Cold War, and so this was really a mission of peace, to bring together both sides of the conflict. So the first students from the Soviet bloc, the first students from Maoist China, came to Atlantic College. The college's first headmaster was Desmond Hall, who had served as a rear admiral in the Second World War. He believed, along with military colleagues and ambassadors from around the world, that future conflicts could be avoided by bringing young people together in education. He felt if students served together, that would help them see that brighter future. So all students here were involved in a rescue service. So we had beach rescue, sea rescue, and cliff rescue as the three rescue services when the college began, which is how the boat was designed. With Hoare's naval background, the school had many maritime activities, and right at the start, students were tasked with making a boat for sea rescue. Ruse off to the boathouse to meet Mish Krieber, who runs the inshore rescue boat training here at the college. The initial safety boats were fully inflatable Zodiacs with a, a fabric floor, and the, the Bristol Channel's quite a rough stretch of water, and it's quite rocky as well, and some of those boats were damaged on the rocks. Desmond Hoare sent the boys up to the castle and said, grab a table from the tower and bring it to the seafront, and they glued the top of the table onto the bottom of the boat and took it out and gave it a try. Unusual invention. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it was crude, but it was effective. It was quite bouncy, and, but it, it made the boat much stiffer and, and less flexible in the waves. Over the next few years, under the guidance of the headmaster, students developed this extraordinary boat in their spare time, giving it a V-shaped hull and adding other refinements. Prototypes were built, taken on the water and tested to destruction. Gradually, the design of the rigid inflatable boat, or RIB, took shape. In 1969, there was a, a Round Britain powerboat race, so 2,000 miles all the way around the British Isles. And one of the teams was were let down by their commercial boat builder. So they phoned up Desmond, and he got two boys out of their maths exam. <laughs> and they thought they were in real trouble. And he said, uh, we, we need to make a boat. It needs to be 21 feet. It needs to go all the way around the British Isles for a race and you've got to build it in three weeks. Three weeks? Yeah. I'm intrigued, how did the boat do in the race? They set off on day one, and some boats dropped out. And so on day two, some more boats dropped out, and our boat kept going. As the race progressed, we became the darlings of the race, and the underdog, and... Uh, what was the end result? And out of 43 boats, uh, we came 19th. The potential of such a fast, lightweight and virtually unsinkable vessel was noticed by the Royal National Lifeboat Institution. Hoare sold them the patent for a single pound, and in 1970, the first fleet of RNLI ribs entered service. And to find out just how effective they really are, Ruse taking one out for a spin. How are ribs being used today? So they're prevalent all over the world now. The military use them, the RNLI use them, and they're a staple of any rescue organisation. They're great bits of kit. Would you say the rib is the go-to rescue solution on the sea? Yes. From its humble origin, the rib has gone on to save thousands of lives, and in honour of the college that created it, the RNLI's fleet of ribs are known as Atlantics. You know what? I think, I'm being very brave saying this, I think I'm ready for some more speed. Why is that? Oh my goodness! This is amazing! This is so much fun! And off she goes. Rude to the rescue. <laughs> Travelling at a more sedate pace, Angus is on his way to the historic town of Cowbridge. The cattle connection goes right back to the Romans, who had a fort here called Bovium. And it's also home to Capel Jones, our man's next shop. Now then, how are you doing? Uh, yeah, nice to meet yeah, you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. This looks impressive. Thank you, making socks. Socks? Yep. They look very warm socks. They will be. OK, I'll have a look around and see yep. what I can find. Give us a shout if you need help with anything. I will. Thank you very much. Aside from Ruby's knitwear, there's lots more to admire in here. <laughs> and with £115 left to play with, is there something calling to you, Angus? Oh, it's not, is it? Oh, can you believe it? It's another top hat. There's a lot of them about. It was designed like that to travel in your case because 
It's a collapsible top hat. How cool is that? What you've got to watch out for, though, is on these collapsible ones is the condition. Quite often the sort of springs go and they don't fill out properly, but this one does. It's probably sort of early 20th century, certainly that sort of Edwardian era. And then to collapse it, done. Oh, do you know, I would have been tempted with that over the other one, but I can't have two top hats, can I? Two hats would be an extravagance. Something else? What is this, you may wonder? Well, I'll tell you what it is. It's a knife sharpener. You've got two sharpening blades there. You put your knife in, pull it back, and that sharpens it. It's got this lovely sort of cutlery style handle on it, and this is actually called a pistol grip handle, because it looks like the shape of what a, a pistol would be. The other lovely thing is, it's a silver handle. Silver hallmark there, with the Sheffield assay office mark there. We like Sheffield, don't we? Loves a bit of Yorkshire, does our Angus. Mounted on a wooden block, so you'd sit it on your table, sharpen your knives before dinner. £30. Not bad. Little ding on it there, but I think that's all right. It's a bit different. I'm going to have a go at that. Let's have a word with Ruby, then. How's that sock coming along? Good, good. On the heel now. Yeah, well, I, I bet you did your cardigan as well, didn't you? Yep, took me a while. Yeah, but it looks wonderful. I think it's fantastic work you've done on it there. Chat Ruby, he could be asking for a discount. The owner's got 30 quid on it. Right, yeah, yeah, I saw that, yeah. Um, OK, he's straight to business, yeah. right, OK, yeah. And he's not in the shop at the moment. Right. So I'm afraid we'll only be able to do the 10%. 10%. That we usually do for customers. So. Yeah, how good your maths? Is that 20 quid? No. 25. 25. That's 25. a bit better than 10%. So do you know what? Let's tap it. 25 Thank pounds. You. Thank you. Oh, sweet. Looks like the old Ashworth charm paid off in the end. And that purchase wraps up his shopping. Now, where did you park the car? Back on terra firma at last, Ruse made her way to the nation's capital, Cardiff. She's come to the pumping station to get her hands on one last bit of booty. But it looks like everyone else has gone home. I was so busy enjoying the high seas that I forgot about the last shop. But now I've got half an hour to buy one more item before the shop closes. So, um, yeah, I was a bit foolish, so I'll get to it. <laughs> yeah, you better had, but with three floors crammed with hundreds of dealers, you couldn't have picked a worse shop to panic buy in. Right. Now, this is where I've become a bit of a homing beacon. So you rule out anything modern, vintage, retro, and just look for the antiques. Records, no. Oh, lordy, there's also the added wrinkle of your limited budget. Only about £65 left, remember? Want my advice? Run! Victorian shopping arcade downstairs. Oh, look, some more West German pottery. That is lovely, but that is not going to be affordable. Back to where I started, yes. Am I going to get some... Ancient Greek pottery for under £60? Probably not. Definitely not. There must be something round here. Can I have a look at this little mother-of-pearl dish? Is that 20 you've got on there? Yeah, it does one. look like 20. Yeah. There we are. I do like it, and it's quite rare that you'll find such a large piece of mother-of-pearl. Yeah, it's a nice little dish, that one, isn't it? It is, mm. it is. I just wish the, the condition of the inside yeah. of it matched that luster mm. on the outside. Maybe a little clean and it might come up. That'll remove the patination. <laughs> there we are, I've got a bit of spray for you. OK, are you OK for me to try yes, this? You go yes. for it. 11th hour, limited budget and uh, offer to uh, dust your antiques. <laughs> How long are you staying? <laughs> <laughs> About three more minutes by my reckoning, Sue. I think that is actually cleaning up quite nice. Oh, yes. That's a yes, then. Looks like I'm giving you £20. OK, that sounds good Perfect. to me. Perfect, <laughs> thank you. Mission accomplished and just in the nick of time too. Two minutes to go. She did it. And relax, time to say Huel Fower to Wales and all those tricky to pronounce place names. Where's the auction again? I thought it was Wooten Under Edge. Wooten Under Edge. But I think locally it's Wotton Under Edge. Oh, interesting. Try not to upset the locals, eh? Best to get some shut-eye first. Night-night. It's auction day in Wootton, Underidge. 
and are experts at dressing for success. Angus, you're looking very smart today. Thank you. Well, I thought I'd make an effort, you know. I've, I've got a bronze tie to go with your beautiful jacket. <laughs> and you've even had a haircut. I have. Well, you know, I thought I'd best up my game. You're always looking amazing, so... Oh, thank you. Well, I have to say, you're looking very good and very confident, so do you think you might win? <laughs> <laughs> Courage, Angus. After scouring the shops all over Wales, our two have crossed the border and arrived in the Cotswolds. They're selling their wares at Wooten auction rooms and on the internet too. Angus forked out £180 on his five auction lots, bless him. Good on Angus. I absolutely love these ledgers. I do have a thing about old writing and this is 1700s. It is almost a piece of art, but... These are not local interest. This is about two hours away from where we are. I love it, but I think he's going to make a big loss on this one. Not good for his balance sheet. Rue was a little more cautious, spending £100 exactly on her five lots. My word, look at this. If Rue was a pot, this would be Rue. Bright, colourful, vibrant. The West Germany studio pottery vase, so made after the war and actually relatively inexpensive. These are my tip for the future. I think these could be really sought after, but at the moment they don't do a lot of money. You heard it here first, folks. Let's garner the thoughts of Philip Taubenheim, today's man on the podium. The spectacles are good. They're nice, simple gold wire work. The Harrods name, of course, will help. I think those go quite well with the top hat, in a way. You could, you could change your whole character with that. But they will sell. They'll, they're fine. The knife sharpener is a problem to me because I've looked at it quite carefully and we've got a knife sharpener and we've got a silver handle, but they were born differently. The whole thing has been, been put together, so um, that's going to be a struggle, I think. Well, let's find out, shall we? There's a couple of chairs going spare. Here we are. I tell you what, we're certainly whizzing through the auctions. And we're putting on the Ritz. Angus's topper is up first. You would sit top hat. Do you think? Absolutely. As opposed to my flat cap. Yes. Twenty, William. At twenty pounds. Thank there you. Go. That's pounds. good. You're almost in profit. There, are twenty pounds. I'm bid with the room. Twenty-five. I'm bid. Thirty, William. At twenty-five. That's I'm good. Bid. The auctioneer's pushing it. He is. He's, the auctioneer's well working the crowd. Yes. I'm bid. You're all happy enough with that. At thirty pounds. We go then at thirty. I think that's gone a bit flat. Oh. <laughs> Part two of our disguise kit now. Rue's gold-plated bins. These are my favourite. Yes. You do. 20 pounds, anybody have a go at them? Oh, Tell if you like. At 10 pounds, I'm only bid. 10 carat gold right. plated. 10 pounds, I'm only bid. At 10 pounds, at 15 anywhere now. 10 carat gold plated. Bid. The spectacles there. At 10, 15 on bid. It's an online bid. At 15, 15 on bid. Thank 15. you. At 15. 15. Where do we go oh, from there? You've got to do more than now. that. At 15 pounds on bid. Why is he 20 anywhere? We're all out. The room is out. China's China's one one more. At 15 pounds. 10 carat oh, gold plated. Pounds. Doesn't matter how many times you say it, Rue. Oh, that's a shame. I thought they would have made 30. Mm. <sighs> Everything's gone for cost price so far. Can Angus's combined travel set do any better? 30 for the two. Go on. 30 pounds I'm bid for the two at 30. We're away at 30 pounds I'm bid. For the loss at 30 pounds. 35 is it? 35 I'm bid. At 35 I'm bid for the two at 35. Not dear, is it? At 35 No, it's not dear. Bid. No. At 35. Tell them, Angus. At 35 pounds. All done. Oh, Commission no. bid at 35 pounds. You're happy enough with that? At 35 pounds it goes then. <laughs> not really. <laughs> You're travelling in the wrong direction, Angus. You win some, you lose some. Yeah. Hey, you know. Well, let's see if Rue can win some with her silver napkin rings. Put them in. Twenty pounds for the two. Twenty for the two. Twenty for the two napkin rings. Come on. We're bid ten at ten pounds. I'm only bid at ten pounds. I'm only bid at ten. Fifteen we're bid at fifteen. I'm bid at They're fifteen. Lovely, twenty right? anywhere now. Twenty anywhere now for the napkin rings at fifteen pounds. I'm bid at fifteen. Do I see twenty anywhere at fifteen pounds? All over in all directions at fifteen pounds. I seem to be making what I spent. Yeah, it's a bit of a common theme today. I thought the people of Wooten would get behind a Yorkshireman and a Scotswoman. It's not who you are, it's what you buy. So, will anybody from Starbridge turn up for these? You're a man of the land, you should know what's in your wear. Well, I do, yeah, but it's south, south of the Humber, I'm not really interested in it. <laughs> 50 yard tape, 30 if you will. At 30 pounds, I'm bid. Oh, at 30 pounds, at 35, I'm bid. Bids here at 35, I'm bid. At 35, bids there, 40 yard tape. 40, at 40, 40, I'm bid. Thank you, 40, 40 I'm bid. Oh, I'm at getting 40 excited now, I'm getting excited even though I'm losing money. I'm bid. At 45. Anybody taking it on? We're sure. Quite content on this. No mistake. At 45 pounds, and we go. Well, you know, that could have been a lot worse. 
lesson learnt then. It ain't local history if it ain't local. You know what? I'll, I'll take that lot. It's the first of Rue's mother of pearl pieces next. Her brooch. Twenty pounds we bid online then at twenty pounds. Oh my straight word! In. Straight in at twenty. Who comes back in now? Twenty-five in the room. I'm uh, bid. At twenty-five I'm bid. Thirty I'm bid at thirty pounds now. It's at thirty pounds. Not online bid at thirty pounds. You're out in the room at thirty pounds. I'm bid. Anybody coming back in on this one at thirty pounds? You've Happy actually enough? made a decent profit. The You've is doubled. The price and we sell at thirty. I'm getting thirty pounds. Finally, our first profit of the day. Well done, that woman. That was a good result, that. Double down. Time for that cookery medal now. Just check Rue's pockets after this, eh? An internet bid at five pounds. At five. Yes. At five pounds. The next increment is ten. Yes. At five pounds, we only bid. At five pounds. At five. Anybody taking it on? At five pounds. Ten pounds. At yes. ten pounds, I bid. At ten pounds. Well At ten pounds, I've only bid. At ten pounds, I bid. All done? Happy with that? At ten pounds, it goes. Yes. 100% profit. That served up Angus's first slice of success. Do you know the scary thing is that's almost made as much as some of the things I bought that are made of silver and of really high quality and have antique value to them as well. Like your post-war German pot, for example. At ten for the Germanic bars, there are ten pounds only bid. Then at ten pounds on bid, at ten pounds on bid, fifteen anywhere now. At ten pounds on bid, bid here. At ten pounds on bid, at ten pounds. Oh, Anybody joining in? It's a big at size. At ten pounds, at fifteen on bid, at fifteen on bid. Huge size. It's oversized bars. At fifteen on bid, the large Germanic bars there. At fifteen, all done with it. Happy enough with that at fifteen. Ah. Quite. Maybe you're just ahead of your time, Rue. I feel for you there. Angus's last lot, genuine antique or Frankenstein's knife sharpener? 20, 20, 20, 20 pounds were away. Just to remember enough time for the bid. Anybody yeah. doing that? 25, at 20 surely. At 20 From Sheffield. Five in the room anywhere now. Here's a maiden bid at 20 pounds. At 20 pounds. Oh. Nobody wants to begin. At 20 pounds it goes, it sells at 20 pounds and it's sold. That's quite. I thought that would have made more. Yeah. It's not gone awfully well for Angus today. People of Wotton have got, obviously got very sharp knives. <laughs> yeah, that'll be it. And to end, Rue's Mother of Pearl Part 2, polished up. Five pounds on bid. Ten Look pounds on ten. bid. Ten. It's ten a lovely thing. It's almost like a miniature bathtub. At ten pounds on only bid. Little dish there. Can you think of a purpose for it? At ten pounds on only bid. Oh, at ten oh, pounds. Yes, ten. That would Anybody moving it? At ten pounds on only bid. Fifteen anywhere now. You're right. No mistake on that. Well, at ten anyone? pounds then. Ten. Oh, dear. I don't think either of our two have been bathed in glory today. Tomorrow's another day. We might find some treasure tomorrow and, you know, Here's turn our fortunes around. Yeah. Let's go. Preferably me. Before you get ahead of yourselves, let's tot up today's antics. Angus made quite a loss after auction fees, leaving him with £205.28 for next time. After costs, Rue made a smaller loss. But her coffers have now depleted to a mere £114 and 56p. They'll certainly both have their work cut out next time. Well, not the best of days. I mean, technically you won, but... Uh, it doesn't feel like a win, because it no. wasn't about who made the most, it was about who lost the least. Yeah. So I'm a winner-loser and you're a loser-loser. <laughs> Cheeky monkey, come on. <laughs>